As I've mentioned before, you can also cache the polygonized mesh that creates the actual fluid in the simulation uh, just to optimize things even further, okay? So let's go ahead and let's do that. Right now the point cloud is cached so I can scrub forwards and backwards in the timeline without a problem. What I want to do is cache the polygonized mesh. Now this is very important to note, okay? Pretty much anything that Softimage can cache is done using the cache manager over here that I showed you a moment ago. So the cache manager is where you set up all your settings and stuff. You can see here that there's an object which is the, uh, the point cloud that we cached uh, in the previous video. And you'll see also the path to the actual files. So there's actual cache files. And I could show you these if I open up a browser view and I go to simulation and I look for uh, what scene was that done in okay if we look at the browser right here you can see that I have all of these cache files okay and they're saved out in the dot ice cache format by default there's several formats you can choose however if you go to the cache manager um, you can actually choose different formats if we go over here to write we have the ice cache format. We can also choose point cache 2, end cache, or even custom uh, formats. Let me go back to the browser so you can see all the different cache files for every single frame from 1 to 1,000. So let me close that. That, by the way, is the data that's being read out for the cache. All that stuff is done through the cache manager in Softimage. Now, the polygonizer is different. It has its own caching system. Uh, right inside the PPG for the polygonizer. Okay, so if I go to the caching tab over here, you're going to notice that I have some actions that I could choose. I have quite a few options. By default, it's set to no caching, so it's not caching or anything at all. Okay, uh, we can set it to simulate and then write, which is basically going to cache everything out. Once we finish caching, we can use the read only command so that it reads all the cache files for every frame that was cached and simulated. This is uh, a lot faster, of course, than, you know, simulating in every single frame over and over again, which can slow things down quite a bit, especially if you have a very heavy, dense, uh, high-res mesh that you're calculating for your fluid effect. Now, before we get started with that, however, there's really one important thing. Let me go back to the main tab of the Polygonizer PPG, and that's the fact that this Polygonizer is connected. Right now, it has a relationship with the original point cloud that I have hidden and I turned it off. Okay? What I want it to do, I want it to be connected to the cached point cloud, which is a new one that I created that's cached. So how do I do that? Well, under the main tab, we have these input commands down here. So this is actually pretty simple to use. If you hit the select all button over here on the right, it's going to go ahead and select any object that has a relationship or is connected with this polygonized mesh. In this case, you notice in the Explorer, it highlights the point cloud, the original one, that, uh, that is simulated. What I want to do is I want to hit remove, so it removes whatever I was selected. So if that point cloud was selected and it was attached to it, hitting the remove button will disconnect it. So right now, if I hit select all, it's not going to select anything, and I'm going to get a warning message down at the bottom telling me, hey, this thing's not connected to anything. What are you trying to do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the add button, and now a pick session is going to occur. And Softimodge wants to know, okay, which point clouds or what objects do you want to be connected with this polygonized mesh? So I'm going to go ahead and click on my cached point cloud in the Explorer. And I'm going to right click to end the selection. So essentially what this does is it connects the polygonized mesh to the new point cloud. So you don't have to you know, delete the polygonized mesh and create a new one from scratch. Just use the connection buttons down here in the inputs for add and remove to go ahead and add and remove anything you want very conveniently. So let me uncheck mute and now you notice that I get my fluid uh, it just pops up and it's calculated now for my particle effect. And if I render this out you can see there's my fluid in my scene. It looks pretty cool. So now, now that's working if I go back to the first screen and play this again I've got the point cloud cached but the fluid isn't cached at the moment and you can see how nicely the fluid kind of hits the bottom of the sink and starts to uh, to spread out and do pretty cool stuff. I'm pretty much ready to cache the uh, polygonized mesh, but there's a couple of important things I want to uh, to note. All right. Uh, first thing, 
I want to switch the action mode to simulate and write. Okay. The next thing is, by default, just like with the cache manager, the polygonizer is going to use your current frame range to simulate this. So if your frame range is set from 1 to 1,000, which is the case right now, it's going to go ahead and simulate from frame 1 to 1,000. All right. If you want to use a custom range, come in here into PPG, click on Use Range, and then type in your custom range. I'm going to go ahead and use my frame range down here, which will be perfectly fine. The next thing you want to probably do is select an output location for where the polygonized mesh files are actually going to be saved out. I'm going to use the default is fine, but you're free to change that uh, file direction if you want, or file location. Uh, the file name is also very important. By default, it's going to call it cache underscore em poly. Um, you might want to change this just to make things a lot simpler and more organized. So I'm going to call this uh, sync underscore example. And then you have two options for the file format. You can save in Eric Mutz's uh, proprietary format, which is EMP2. Or you can save in uh, OBJ format. I like to use EMP2. It works out really good. If for whatever reason you want to delete any cache files that you've cached before um, while you're testing and doing R&D, you can use this button here to delete cache files. Right now, uh, there really isn't anything there. So next thing I want to do before I go ahead and simulate this is I want to go to the advanced tab this is very important you're going to see a motion vectors parameter here by default it's checked off okay you want to make sure you check this on or else your cache simulation is not going to allow you to do any motion blur uh, which could be a problem usually you want to do motion blur when you're doing uh, these kinds of things it looks much more realistic and much better so if you want to do motion blur make sure you check this on Okay. Once that's done, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go back to the first frame of the simulation and just hit the play button. And this thing's going to play through. And as long as the simulate and write option is turned on, in the background, it's just caching the files for every single frame for the mesh in the EMP2 format. Okay. So there's no progress bar with this. Um, there's nothing telling you, hey, it's caching right now. But the way this works is, as long as it's playing down here in the timeline, it's actually caching the files out, even though it may not look like it. That's actually what it's doing in the background. So let this play through all the way to frame 1000 or frame 500 or whatever it is that you're doing. And um, when it's finished, uh, we'll meet up again and I'll show you what to do next. I'm just going to skip ahead in the video and meet you when this is finished. Um, I decided not to wait till it got to frame 1000. I actually stopped it at frame 311. I just simply didn't see the point in having this thing continue to simulate. Uh, it's not a real project anyway. It's just for the tutorial. So as long as it serves its purpose of being a teaching tool, I think that's good enough. So I stopped it at this frame, and we can see here if we render this out what we have. When it's finished simulating, in my case I stopped it at this frame, but when it's done, what you want to do is you want to switch over to the mode called read only. Okay, This will force the uh, polygonizer to basically read from any cache files, which I've already saved, and uh, will go a little bit faster. Okay, So if I go back to the first frame with read only turned on and I play this, it goes a little bit faster. Now, it'll start to slow down simply because the mesh is so dense and there's just so many polygons that obviously it's going to slow down um, so caching speeds up but you're still going to get a, some slowdown so just keep that in mind the cool thing is that if I'm within the cached frames I can play it backwards or forwards see that that's pretty neat so I can scrub forwards and backwards I just can't go past frame 300 really because I didn't cache past that point if I do that, I'm just going to get an error message that says, um, you know, there's no cache files for those frames. But that's fine. I think this uh, serves the purpose. So it's pretty simple. All you do is switch over to simulate and write, type in the name for your files, choose a location and whatnot and a format, and then uh, play back the, uh, the actual simulation, stop it whenever you want, and when it's finished, uh, going through all the frames that you chose, you can go to the read-only command, and then you can scrub back and forth for playback or whatnot and see the uh, cache file 
simulate or play back in front of you. It's actually going to play back. It's not going to simulate um, at all. It's not simulating any math or calculating anything right now. It's just reading back the cache files that we saved before. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to end this video here, and in the next one, I'm going to talk about motion blur uh, and some really important stuff you need to keep in mind um, in case you're going to use motion blur to render this stuff out in your projects.